happy Thursday. Yeah, we're starting the vlog off early because you know what, thug life. Today I had a little burst of energy and I was like, hey, Sophia just got a haircut. You guys probably want to see it or don't care at all whatsoever, but I'm still going to show you anyway because she looks real cute. Who are you? Are you ready for this? Like, do you are you into are you into it? I think you are. Where is my little supermodel? Where is my baby supermodel? Oh my goodness. Oh my good. Oh, let me see your face. Oh, wow. Are you so beautiful? Look at that schnauzer beard. Oh, that's nice. Can I see your nubbin? Let me see. Oh, that, that's a nice nubbin. Oh my goodness. You want to show the internet your nubbin? Oh, a beard to colita? Oh, wow. Oh, it's a nice nubbin. Let me see your nose. Oh, that's beautiful. Can I see your eyes? Oh, they nice. You feel so pretty? Do you? Okay, you're over it. All right. Hey, supermodel. Oh, ya te amor a mi vida. Donde está mi choncho? Donde está ese choncho? Mira nomás. Mira esta docena. Mira esta docena. Mira esta docena. Cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls. So many cinnamon rolls. Oh, they're nice. I want this one right here. Oh, that's, that one's juicy. Oh, it has all the icing. Oh, it has all the icing. Oh, they're nice. Oh, they're nice. Yes, it is. Clearly, I can't control myself around dogs. This is just a problem. It's always existed, and you just learn to live with it. Before we get into this weekend vlog, I did want to say thank you to ButcherBox for sponsoring this weekend vlog, and it's my favorite ButcherBox promotion of all time. Why am I getting shortness of breath? Oh, that's right, because I still have bronchitis. I don't think I've ever felt this way before, where like, I feel fine. I just can't breathe. My dad called me the other day. He's like, Mika, how are you doing? How are you feeling? He still calls me baby. And I was like, you know, I'm fine. I just can't breathe. And he's like, oh yeah, really? That's it? That's just, that's all that's wrong is you can't breathe? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm fine. I have a fever. The cough's pretty much under control, but like, I can't walk anywhere really fast because I, I can't breathe. And he's like, yeah, that's not okay. <laughs> So that's my update, but you guys are here because we are having ButcherBox's sexiest promotion they always have, which is the free ground beef for life. Did you see that like cinematic turn I did for you guys because it's ground beef and it's very exciting? Never did I thought I would get to 37 years of age where things like promotional ground beef get me excited. But you know what else is getting me excited? That I have an Amazon delivery out right now for uh, these, like these shelves, like these cabinet shelves that I'm gonna put in here so that my cabinet doesn't look like this anymore. Do you see? Like, like what is that? What is that nightmare? What is that disgust? Like my kids would say disgust. They don't say disgusting, like that's disgust. <laughs> so clearly I cannot be left alone to my own devices when I'm promoting Butcher Box's free ground beef for life. But if you guys are new around here and you've never heard me talk about Butcher Box, that's weird because I've been doing Butcher Box for like four years. <laughs> so Butcher Box is an amazing home service or delivery service where you get grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, wild-caught seafood, and humanely raised pork delivered to your doorstep. Yeah, it's like, you know when we used to get excited about like those beauty sample boxes that we would get every month and you just get like five samples of like beauty products and that was exciting? No, we've evolved, you guys. Now we get excited to get meat deliveries. <laughs> So no matter if you guys have a busy schedule, a big family, a little family, ButcherBox is awesome because you get food delivered at the peak of freshness. So no matter if it's steaks, like grass-fed beef steaks, which by the way, I'm starting to get a little offended because like my family tastes the difference. Is that a me problem or is that a them problem? Because I think I'm starting to spoil them. They're like, are these butcher box steaks? And I was like, no, we ran out. And they're like, oh, <laughs> you know when just an expression or like 
on exhalation defines what they're trying to say. That's literally what happens. Oh, hmm. <laughs> All right, so like I told you guys, if you're unfamiliar, Butcher Box is a delivery service where you guys can get beef, pork, chicken, uh, seafood delivered to your doorstep. It always comes frozen, perfectly packaged and frozen, no leaks, no melts, nothing gross. And it comes in a fully recyclable box, totally recyclable, so it's not waste and everything comes individually frozen. So that's, I think that's my favorite part. Like if you were to say, obviously besides the taste and the quality and you know, the convenience, which are all really awesome. Like what's the best part is that everything's individually frozen. So if it's just me, if it's Parker and the girls, if it's all six of us, I can kind of tailor it to all of our needs, defrost to our needs. Like for example, this, is an example of how much of a loving wife I am. You guys know I love to tear it up in the kitchen and I love to cook. Parker loves to grill. And it's just, we're a cooking family. But sometimes my husband makes special requests for dinner like ground beef tacos, which I feel very, <laughs> I feel very morally compromised cooking that because it's just like ground beef in a flavor packet with crunchy tacos from the supermarket. I'm like, dude, let me make you real tacos, you know? And he's like, no, I want, I want those kinds of tacos. Like, the, we have a special name for them here at the house, but it might offend some of you guys, so we're just not gonna get into it. But he wants these tacos, so this morning I made sure that I had all the essentials for Parker's white boy tacos. <laughs> So anyway, it doesn't matter the size of your family, how many people you live with, what your preferences are. Butcher Box tailors to you guys. It comes in five different boxes. Four of them are already pre-made, pre-thought out. You don't have to overthink it. They're all just crafted, already ready to go with the selections. And then you can get the custom box, which is what we get because we're picky and very specific and we like to get pork butt. We like to get the sirloin steaks. Parker likes ribeye. So like if we make steak, we cook different kinds of steaks for everyone in the house. <laughs> So if you factor in the convenience, if you factor in the flavor, if you factor in the high quality of all the ingredients or like the cuts that Butcher Box offers, like I hate to justify another purchase for you guys, but you need to try it. <laughs> And no matter if your family is like ours where the number changes depending on the time of the week or you're gonna be out of town or you travel for work, you are able to customize the um, frequency of your membership. You can cancel any time. It's kind of one of those things where like, you might as well try it, especially right now that they're doing the free ground beef for life promotion. You know, it's nice when you get free ribs. And sometimes it's nice when you get like free chicken breasts or seven pounds of meat or whatever. But I think my favorite is the ongoing promotion. So like if you sign up for Butcher Box now because you've been curious, every single time that you order your Butcher Box, you're gonna get two pounds of ground beef, which I mean, tacos, picadillo, hamburgers, uh, bolognese, like a pasta sauce, like ground beef is one of those products that you just have to have always in your freezer, always, because it doesn't matter how much time you have to make dinner, you could always make dinner out of two pounds of ground beef, I promise you guys. If I were to make a list, hear me out on this, if I were to make a list on 10 ingredients that you need always in your home for a quick, easy meal. Obviously it would be like pasta, ground beef, onions, potatoes. Like there's a few ingredients that are just, they play well with anyone, anybody, any ingredients, and you can whip up a meal in a flash. Today we're gonna whip up Parker's tacos in a flash with Butcher Box's ground beef. <laughs> Who's excited? <laughs> You know, of all the things that you could learn around here, I'm pretty sure that this is probably not the most exciting. <laughs> but you guys are always so kind and you always say that I'm real with you guys and this is part of being real, is it's a Thursday, the girls are coming home and Parker has had a really, really two months. So if my baby wants tacos, he's gonna get his tacos. You best believe. So anyway, if you guys have been on the fence to try Butcher Box, do not hesitate because for the entire length of your subscription to Butcher Box, you're gonna get this. Could you imagine being able to give your husband the tacos he wants at the drop of a hat because you're always gonna have this delicious ground beef in your freezer? <laughs> 
<laughs> and you know, isn't this awesome? I know I've said this before, but like, I find it so awesome that it comes like this. So like, you don't have to use the two pounds of ground beef. You just can use one at a time. You know, isn't that super convenient? Like, I didn't have to defrost both. I could have just defrosted one. But if it came in that like supermarket packaging with the styrofoam, like you can't cut that once it's frozen. You can't separate it. So you have to do it when you buy it and then you have to use additional Ziploc bags and you have to squeeze out all the air. It's just a nightmare. So look at that. How convenient is that? I know, I'm crushing on meat right now. Anyway, that is my little butcher box bit. I will show you guys the tacos once I'm done because I know you guys are waiting on bated breath to see Parker's Delicious Taco. I can't even pronounce Parker's Delicious Tacos. <laughs> so like I told you guys, all the information for Butcher Box will be listed in the description box of this video. We will make the tacos in just a minute. But this weekend, nothing planned. <laughs> Nothing. We really got nothing planned. I think on weekends like these where nothing's really on the books, it's very promising. Oh, actually, I have to ask Biddy if she's okay with me sharing, but Randon, Parker's youngest, is turning 15, and for her birthday, she asked for pink hair. We got all the approvals necessary. <laughs> And I made her an appointment at Abstract Studio. Y'all know I'm a fan of my Katie girl. I made her an appointment at Abstract Studio with her uh, unicorn hair color specialist. And we're going to give baby pink hair. So that's actually happening on, happening on Saturday. But I'm going to ask her if she wants me to share or if she's okay with me sharing. And I'll show you guys. I think she's going to look amazing. But yeah, that's all we have going on. I mean, it's going to be kind of like an unplanned off the seat of our pants kind of weekend. But seeing as everything has kind of gone awry, 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 awry since a while now. It's just, it's been a lot, you know, it's been a lot. I, I'll get into it maybe in this vlog, maybe at some other point, but just, I mean, Parker got COVID, his dad passed suddenly, the dope was in heaven now, you know, I got bronchitis. It's just, it's been a lot. Uh, Parker went to the dermatologist a few weeks ago and we got his results back and he has melanoma. It's, Jesus take the wheel, you know? It's just give it to God, give it to God, give it to God because yes, can it really get any worse? It really can. So we're gonna focus on our blessings right now and we're gonna focus on enjoying the moment and laughing at things like the tacos that Parker likes and they make him happy and we're gonna focus on, you know, certain meetings and things that we've accomplished in the last few days with Mateo and, you know, everything that's been going on at school with him. And it may not make sense to us right now, all this pain and all these trials that we're being put through, but it will make sense. And I'm confident in that because I've lived through it, you know, with, you know, a failed marriage and career choices and moving and things like that. It just, it never makes sense at the time that it happens. It never does. So if you just take this as a obnoxious soapbox, TED talk, whatever, little reminder that you may be in the middle of a storm right now, not knowing why this is happening to you and why God trusts you so much with such a strong load. But man, I tell you, it always, always makes sense. It always just comes full circle. It comes into fruition and you're like, wow, thank you. It's like that little graphic. I don't know if you guys have seen it before. I'll try and find it, but it's like that graphic where God is holding an enormous teddy bear behind his back. And then there's a little girl in front of him with her little teddy bear. And God's asking for the teddy bear, like, give me your teddy bear, trust me. And she's like, mm, I don't know about that. So we're kind of in that moment right now where God wants my teddy bear, he can take it because I trust that whatever is in store for us and for our family and whatever is a part of our story is gonna make sense. But just talking about it and just kind of keeping track of everything that we've gone through, it seems unfair and it seems, I mean, it's, it's gutting, <laughs> it's totally gutting. But it's also a beautiful reminder to all of the friendships we have and all of the family that we have and all of the people that surround us that 
have shown up for us, that have helped us, that have held us, that have just been, I don't know how to say it in English, but it loosely translate to like, just have given us oxygen, you know? And that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. We have our moments of like grief and sadness and just maybe a little anger still <laughs> while this is happening, but you know what? It's life and if it's sad right now, it's not gonna last and if it's happy later, it's not gonna last. So we might as well just really be in the moment and enjoy Parker's white boy tacos, you know? <laughs> Do you want to make some? Do you want to make some tacos? I cope with life with humor. And I don't know if you guys are new around here, but for the last eight years, I've done a very good job at making sure that I find the humor, the happy, the sparkles, the shine, you know, the cracks to let the sun shine through. And, uh, and we're going to keep, we're going to keep doing that because it's worked so far. So I hope you guys are here for that. And, uh, I know you guys are, gonna leave a bunch of sweet and amazing comments I, I just just don't because I don't want to cry <laughs> send me good energy but don't write anything down because I don't want to cry and my face gonna be puffy again and just <sighs> puffy face is not something I'm willing to accept right now okay puffer look is not my look <laughs> Mexican style. No. White boy. <laughs> My favorite is when the girls are like, Danny, do you have Mexican style cheese? I was like, no, I don't have panela, cotija, uh, queso fresco. But this is, this is, <laughs> you know? It's delicious. This is one of his favorite foods. And we're so romantic that we have like the his and her version of these kinds of tacos. So he likes these crunchy tacos. And I always do this. I'm letting my cheese melt for a little bit. So I just take regular tortilla chips and when I don't have any, I just break the taco shell into chips. I'm sorry, this is called cross-contamination right here. Yep, it's okay, let's now scoop I that out. Now I can no longer use this container. Let's scoop that out. So these are Parker's version and then, oh, sour cream with one hand is really hard. And then I'm gonna do the chip version. I was so excited. I was like, ooh, dinner's easy. I can do this. Do this in a jiffy. The girls are actually going to be late, and uh, I'm hungry, so we're going to eat. <laughs> you know, we have a rule. If you're going to be late, you let us know, and we'll wait. But if you don't let us know, we don't wait. We're not waiting. <laughs> going to do some Mexican cheese. Oh, wait, I already did some. Darn it! Double cheese. And then some tomato. Here we go. Honestly, that's just for garnish. It doesn't do much. Look at that. Wait, hold on. Let me grab Parker's. Mmm. The best part of these tacos is when the little grease like slides out of the bottom. That's the goodness. That's the good <laughs> the flavor coming out. That's the magic. Look at that. Do you need a fork? Probably, right? I got a spoon. <laughs> spoon. Just spoon it. Smart. Say Mart. Say hello, Mart. Say hello, Mart. Look at. I did my toes. Aren't they cute, Mart? You like mommy's toes? 
Look, all the perverts on the internet are excited right now. There you go. You're welcome. All right, we're doing this. I, I mean, I don't know if you're interested in watching me eat nachos, but. Are they really nachos if I barely put any cheese on them? Are they nachos because of the cheese or are they nachos because of the chips? It feels more like a taco salad to me. You don't have melty cheese, so it's more taco salad. Taco salad -y? Oh, so good. This taco packet is really good, you guys. We usually use the, um, <clears throat> gosh, I'm making a mess. Yummy? Like enough to cheer you up just a little bit? So simple, yeah, so good. Getting that dopamine going right now. It's wonderful. <laughs> Oh, thank you. All right, you guys, so all day today I thought it was Friday. If not, it's Thursday. Um, the packet, let me show you guys the flavor packet. So usually we use the yellow ones, like when Parker wants these kinds of tacos, we use the yellow packets, but I found these at the store the other day and they're really good. The flavor is delicious. I added a little bit of extra black pepper and garlic salt because I used extra beef than the recipe calls for. The recipe, <laughs> The recipe, the packet calls for one pound of ground beef. I used two, so I just compensated with black pepper and um, garlic salt. Look at that, yummy, delicious goodness, mm-hmm. So that's it, we're gonna enjoy dinner and uh, pretend it's not Thursday, because tomorrow's a work day. How whack is that? It's whack attack. You know what? We have something really exciting happening tomorrow. Window estimates. Estimates, 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 estimates. A guy's coming to check out our windows because our windows are leaking. It's gonna be window pane, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Do you think Randers will let me vlog her hair? Blow out her hair? Vlog her vlog hair. Vlog her hair. Oh yeah, she will, she will let you do that. Saturday. Anything. I don't see why not. We're doing the pink pie, pink fire hair. Mm -hmm. That should be exciting. Yeah, that'll be very exciting. Anyway, I'm gonna eat. I, I literally let my chips get soggy. Those are, why are you looking at my food? They're not soggy, I just tried them. While you're over there. I'm watching out for you. Why don't you guys tell me? Checking your sogginess. Can't take them anywhere. Hey you guys, happy Friday. It's eight o'clock. This is my hair. Like, you know, I've heard of cow licks and like sleeping in the wrong direction and like weird stuff happening to your hair while you sleep, especially with like little boys, you know, they wake up and they look like little cockatoos. What is, what is this? Like, why can't I have that volume? all over my head on a daily basis. What, what is this? <sighs> all right, let's ignore, let's just, we're just gonna do a little tuckaroo action, just a little tuckaroo, see? Hide the evidence. We uh, got our Amazon delivery yesterday that I was telling you about. Do any of you guys have to leave things obnoxiously in the way or you will find any excuse in the world not to do it? Like, no, is that just me? Has anyone else created a system to baby-proof your life because adulting sucks and you do things like this so that you trip over it every single time until you're finally like, okay, fine, I guess I'll do it. So I was telling you guys yesterday that, oh, by the way, it's Friday, which means the boys, the girls are at school, mom of the year over here. I thought the boys didn't come back until Sunday. They're here all weekend. Do you remember when I told you at the beginning of this vlog that I was like, oh, we don't have plans this weekend. We're just gonna play it by ear because something comes up. Yeah, <laughs> I get a pirate voice when I'm upset at myself. And so I was like, what? So the boys are here all weekend. Randon has her hair appointment. She said we could vlog it. Uh, Parker has a doctor's appointment. <laughs> What? Yeah, whatever, okay. So when we had this kitchen done, we were at the, um, we were able to decide every single cabinet, what the inside of every cabinet looked like, how it was displayed, broken up, and everything. But being that we've never designed a kitchen, we really didn't know like how deep and confusing and uh, specific cabinets can be. I mean, down to having like cutting board organizers, pull out drawers, uh, drawer dividers, removable or adjustable shelving. So we just kind of said sure when they sent us the plans, but then when everything gets put together, you find out how useful or not useful things are. Let me see, I got my ladder here. 
Oh god. This little ladder, you guys, if you need a, like a step stool that's like borderline ladder height if you're tall, this stuff is awesome. This stuff, this ladder is awesome. I got it at my local Home Depot. I did curbside pickup. Yep. Anyway, hold on. Hopefully I don't plummet to my death. Okay, so this is, we decided to box out the refrigerator and in turn create cabinet space. But I don't know if you guys can tell, but the, the size, like the, the magnitude, this is where I would ridiculously pick up Thuple and put him in the cabinet and show you for perspective how big this spot is. Like this is a cupcake pan and that's how far deep it goes. And that's how high up the whole cabinet is. I mean, it's a massive massive space so you know what I can do oh crap besides not die Woo. I'm gonna unplug this because I know she's gonna try and keep opening and opening and then I'll move the ladder all the way back to give you guys oh my goodness here we go look at that that's a way better look. You can tell it's like, that's an oven. Like there's, and there's still all that space around it. So conceptually, I wanted a raised shelf that would give me enough clearance at the bottom to store things that I could stack, but then also have a thin shelf for things like platters that I could just pull out real easy. So those are standard wire shelves that you would see in like kitchens or pantries garages but it's just one section of the shelf as opposed to the tiered look where they usually come in like four or five levels it's just one I mean, it looks better. I'm so out of breath. <laughs> it looks better, but I don't think no matter what I do, the space itself is just so hard to reach. It's too big, it's too high, and it's too deep. So that's as good as it's gonna get. And you could see like the stuff that I use the most often, the cake pan, we use that pretty often. These platters up here, super often. And the cookware that's right here on the side, we use that at least once a week. Up here, it's a rare occasion we actually dig into that stuff. So I think this would make our lives a little bit easier. Not to mention that, like visually, it's like better real estate. You kind of see what you have. It's easy to find stuff. Like before, we would literally open the cabinet and shove it in and hope it wouldn't fall down the next time we opened it. So I'll link these shelves for you guys in the description box. But anyway, that's uh, that's our exciting morning. Who's ready for more riveting content? Woohoo! <laughs> you guys. 4 p.m. I just got home. I don't want to alarm anyone. I don't want anyone to freak out, but I'm trying to find my evidence so I can prove it to you. About 20 minutes ago, I had the privilege, the honor, the privilege, the amazingness of, yeah. Don't be fooled, that is brand new, newborn baby skin. I just got to hold the baby. I just kneeled too, by the way. <laughs> so my next door neighbor, Irma, you guys know she's like my surrogate best friend. The bo her boys are my boys' best friends. Our husbands get along, like they're best. It's just perfect match made in heaven. The other cool thing about having her across the street is that she has family that visits a lot. Her parents live here, her in-laws visit super frequently, so like I have surrogate parents all the time. <laughs> and now I got to hold a baby! So her nephew is only two months and they let me hold him. I washed my hands like, she's like, come over, meet my family, they're here, whatever. It was after school and I was like, just, just in case, I'm gonna change my shirt and I'm gonna wash my hands 
because if that's a new baby, I want to make sure it's a sterile environment to give him some love in. I may have sniffed him a few times. <laughs> Can you see the happiness? I think, remember I was telling you at the beginning of this vlog that God's timing sometimes feels like a, like a gut punch, but generally speaking, there's usually a reason for it. So I just held a baby, I walked home, I was on cloud nine, my phone rings, and it was the Topo's vet telling me they have his urn. So I have to go pick up his remains uh, and bring him home, but it just doesn't hurt as bad, <laughs> you know? He's gonna be home where he needs to be, but God was just filling my love tank because he knew I was gonna get a little bit of a, of a debit right now. But anyway, um, I was so excited. So I met Ibma's brother and sister-in-law and they have three littles. And I remember how I've always been very connected with my own feelings and knowing when I feel a certain way and just letting myself feel that way. And I remember when both of my boys were born, I felt so invisible. I was so excited that everyone was excited to meet my sons and I was so excited that everyone was loving on them and everyone would run in and see them. But it kind of wears on you a little bit. You feel invisible because you're tired and you don't feel good and your body's recovering and you're tired and everyone just wants to see the baby. And so it's, it was a time in my life where I felt very invisible and it would have been nice to just get some of that attention. So anyway, I text Edema and I was like, hey, does your sister-in-law like makeup and stuff? And she's like, yeah. So I just dropped a little uh, door, a little present at the door before they leave just to kind of let her know that, you know, she's doing a good job. I, I wish I would have gotten that kind of attention, you know, that recognition of, I just did something really amazing. And I know my baby's cute, but give me some loving, you know? <laughs> hey you guys, happy Saturday. It is 9.30. I have this little girl with me. <laughs> so, me, oh. It's not a good time, amigo. Well, baby's calling me. So uh, we are outside Abstract Studio because Biddy Boop is getting pink hair. And I don't know what I did to my nose today. I woke up too early, clearly. So we are here to meet Charlie. She is one of Katie's vivid stylists. She's like, if you want unicorn hair, like literal a rainbow in your hair, she can do it. She's amazing with the vivids. And I think what Randon wants for her birthday is gonna be very... gonna be very attainable <laughs> so we're gonna do a little before action when we go inside and meet Charlie and then uh, we'll show you the after it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting today is not exciting though it's like 40 degrees outside it's dark it's gloomy and it's windy it's weird isn't it it's like 75 yesterday it's not the vibe man. I'm it's not it's not the vibe we're going for for her birthday hair you know it's it's kind of rude boom, boom, boom. give me a little peace sign or something <laughs> hey you guys, so we just walked into the salon and met Charlie and it turns out that for this kind of super cute pink balayage look, it's a two appointment visit or a six hour visit. And Brandon's like, well I got nothing else to do. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is do like a foil balayage first to blonde her and then do the pink. The pink thankfully only takes 30 minutes, but the foil process is very long because you do have to do the foils, you do have to separate the hair. So Randon's gonna have a very long, exciting day at the salon. <laughs> so um, Charlie was really accommodating. I was like, well, why didn't you tell us this is gonna be two appointments? You know, I sent the I sent the pictures early, like I, I signed up for this like weeks ago. Like we made the appointment months ago, submitted the pictures and everything. She's like, well, I just saw the pictures this morning. I'm like, that doesn't help. I would have booked two appointments back to back, you know? But it's fine because Randy doesn't have anything to do and you know, Parker and I can either leave her, pick her up, whatever. So we're gonna do a blonding and then Charlie's gonna do a haircut. Then after the blonding, they'll do the pink. And there's aftercare. I feel like we're getting a tattoo. <laughs> so just to give you guys a look at her hair now, it's a very beautiful like chestnutty brown, but she has hair enough for like 17 people. Lots and lots and lots of hair. And she actually has some dye in it. I don't know if you guys can tell. This is her natural hair color here. And then this is all that's 
kind of grown out. But luckily when she dyed it, it was a very similar color to her natural shade. So they're gonna go in and do the blonding. Look how cute her little space buns are. <laughs> so they're gonna do the blonding. The next time I see you guys, she'll be a little blondie. So they're just gonna do, I, I'm assuming it's kind of like a smudge from here down and around her face. And then they'll go in with the pink. Are you happy? We're gonna have to bring you food. <laughs> or you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When it rains, it pours. We're in the freaking middle of a tsunami right now, apparently. So it's four o'clock. We're waiting for Randon to come home. She's been there since 9.30 this morning. We got to the salon and Charlie's like, yeah, you booked the wrong appointment. You needed to book two separate appointments. And I was like, I called, I asked. I talked to Katie, like, you just found this out this morning. So I was a little frustrated, but it's kind of one of those things where like you're already in like a tiffy mood and so when something like that happens, you're like, it kind of brings out your, can I speak to the manager personality, which I'm not a fan of. So anyway, realizing it was gonna take six hours. And here's the good thing is Charlie was like, well, you know what? I only have a haircut. So if she's willing to wait in between, like I could do the balayage now and then do the haircut. And then after we can do the pink. And so they're already on their way back. Parker went to get her and hello. Do you want to talk about how when it rains, it pours? No? All right, so when it rains, it pours. I was eating upstairs with the boys. They're actually out front playing with our neighbors. They play outside. Yeah, it's 2022 and our kids have friends and they play outside like the olden days. It's fabulous. Anyway, so we were sitting there, we were eating and Wesley comes up to me and I'm just like petting him and I'm like, what the, what is that? So he has this like a lump at the tip of his ear that feels like a hard grape. Like it's the size of a grape and it's hard, and I was like, what the You know what I mean? So I look at it, and I can't get to the bottom of it. I don't see a blister, I don't see like a cut, I don't see a bite, nothing. It's just a massive infection. So I'm like, obviously, I need to clean this up, strip it down, completely wipe it out, and see what's going on there. And I still can't figure it out. It almost looks like he has a little nick at the tip of his ear. Like maybe he, they cut him when they were grooming him. So his, his ears are like this. So right on the, like on the edge, it looks like there's a little nick, but he's also diabetic and he gets a lot of sores all over his body, especially like on his butt area and on his belly. And I mean, why would ears be an exception, you know? So anyway, I am a little upset though, because when I took him to get groomed, his ear was a little dirty and that's part of the grooming process is to wash out their ears and cut the hair that's on the inside of their ears. And they didn't do that. So I don't know if I'm I'm gonna keep going to this location. I had a terrible experience when I took Sophia a few days ago. Like the guy was awful. And so it's just, if I'm going through a lot right now, I know everyone else is and it's a part of life. And so I believe in grace and I believe in, in chances and maybe you know that you had an off day, but at the same time, I'm like, well, I'm paying for a service. So if I don't like it, I have the ability to take my money somewhere else and see if I have better luck at a different location, you know? Anyway, so that's my my two cents. If uh, trigger warning, it's gonna be a little gross. I don't know if you guys wanna see this, but those of you that want to, here's Bumper. And that's his ear. And let me show you guys. So this is the back side of his ear. And there's a nick right there, like a, 
like a little cut. So I don't know if that happened during grooming, but when I picked him up, he wasn't bloody or anything, but I mean, they could have put stipic powder and I wouldn't have noticed. So I just completely shaved it down with the little clippers. I cut it, I cut all the hair first, and then I shaved it down with clippers. I wet it, I put hydrogen peroxide, I put some antibiotic ointment on it and like some spray. So hopefully we're on the road to recovery, but I mean, he's diabetic. So any time that he gets any sort of injury, infection, blister it takes weeks to heal so we're just gonna hang out and hopefully he doesn't feel too crummy but he's giving me kind of crummy vibes he's giving me crummy vibes i know babies i know my baby so that's the update you guys that's our saturday update it's been pretty crummy i uh left brandon at the salon i ran some errands really hard errands to run and then I came home, waited for the boys. The boys got here and we went uh, to the mall. So I took them to the mall to buy some C's candies for their teachers and uh, to do an in-store pickup at Sephora. You guys, I am on a serious mission to find a dupe for the Agustinus Bader Rich Cream. Serious, like a serious, serious mission. I've already purchased a few and none of them are expensive as the Augustine Spader. I think the most expensive one is like 60 bucks. And here's the verdict. Of all the ones that I've purchased, two out of two are misses. <laughs> they're not bad moisturizers, they're just not dupes. So that's something that I wanna talk about in a future video. I don't know if I wanna just include it in the haul because I have a beauty haul coming up that I'm so excited about. So I don't know if I just wanna include the review in that haul video or if you want a separate Agustinus Bader Reach Cream dupe video because I could do that as well. That video is not going to get a lot of hits but if it's a topic that I'm two seconds away from being triggered that television has been on all day and it's been on loud and there's only one little watcher that's watching it and it's musicals all day. Usually I'm totally fine with it but today I'm like I went to pick up my dog in an urn, you know? <laughs> I've had a very, very, very <laughs> almost two months. So this is something that's like, shouldn't normally bother me, but on days like today, I'm like, Wesley and this and that and uh. Anyway, so I took Mateo to the mall. We ran some errands together. We got some chocolates for his teachers. We ate dinner. It's been a good day. I mean, I can't complain about this day in particular with the only exception of Wesley's ear and having to pick up the bowl at the vet. But you know, tomorrow might be a better day. But I just have to wash one comforter. Do you guys remember my fuzzy Ugg comforter? This little nugget right here um, has an ultrasound on Tuesday. And uh, I hope the TV isn't that loud, as loud for you as it is for me. Can you turn it down, please? So a few weeks ago, uh, when we got back from Parker's daddy's funeral, uh, Sophia was acting real strange. She didn't want to eat for about three days. She kept having accidents in the house. And when I tell you that out of all my dogs, the one that has never had an accident in the house, like ever, not even on the days she feels sick, it's Sophia. She had accidents in the house on the comforter, which is why I need to get it laundered. It's so big, I can't put it in our own washing machine. She had accidents in the house. She kept vomiting and it was this weird, like, it looked almost like diarrhea vomit. And she didn't want to eat. So I'm like, what the heck are you vomiting, you know? So anyway, I took her to the vet, they ran blood work. It turns out she has some issues with her liver. Like her liver was so inflamed and so like bad that they had to put her on this like enzyme to cull her liver and an antibiotic to reduce the inflammation and the infection and on a like pure diet, like this specific ID diet, which I didn't like, she didn't like. So I just kind of Googled like, what's a good healing your liver kind of diet. And so I cooked her her own food. <laughs> now I'm cooking two kinds of dog food. And so for two weeks now, she's been on medication on a special diet and she has an appointment on Tuesday. And this appointment's for an ultrasound to check if she has a tumor on her liver, which is what the vet suspects. So when we took her in initially, her liver was so inflamed that they really couldn't get a good like view of it. So they said, come back in two weeks. We'll do an ultrasound. Stop. Stop. 
and we'll see, we'll confirm or deny if it's a tumor and what's going on. So I'll need your prayers for Tuesday because we have a really big, really big appointment for this girl coming up. Oh, All right, let me see. Let me see. <laughs> wow. What do you think? We do? It's super intense. It's nice though, because it'll last like a ton of washes. Let me see. That's really pretty. I like how blendy it is too. Look at that. Sunday it is 8 o'clock mama just bounced from the house so yesterday I left you guys off on the oh my gosh the TV is so loud it's driving me crazy it's just been one of those few days and this is gonna be like one of those mom rants wife tangents wife rants whatever you want to call them like if you're the mental load carrier in your family this is something that you will appreciate if you're not you're gonna be like well you're just whining and complaining it's so easy just to ask for help. Okay, so this is only gonna apply to those that have, you know, that are everyone's in the family. <laughs> so anyway, uh, little mom, wife rant. I'm on my way to the laundromat to wash a comforter that Sophia peed on. It's just, I needed to get out of the house. Like, you know when you just wanna jump in the car and like buy a plane ticket, like a one-way plane ticket to another country where they don't extradite moms, and then you could just live there forever and like, no one ever has access to you ever again. That's kind of in the mood I'm in. It's like, I think we pigeon pigeonhole ourselves into these roles of uh, like the house manager. And I get it, there's some people that that's their strength and they're good at it, but ultimately when the house manager and the mental load carrier is going through something really heavy, the load becomes heavier. And no matter how good you are at handling it normally, when emotionally you're at a deficit, it's almost impossible. And so the littlest things drive you crazy. And this is kind of what I wish my family understood is, I don't mind taking care of you guys. I'm not complaining about taking care of you guys. I'm not complaining about doing the grocery shopping and all the cooking and all the laundry and all the cleaning and all, I'm not complaining about that. I'm just wishing I didn't feel so invisible on days or weeks or weekends or, I'm not getting in your lane. You need to calm down. I think the laundromat's here. Am I about to pass it? Sorry, guys. I'm distracted. There we go. Yeah, it is here. Damn it. It's already full. So I'm not complaining about, about it. I just wish that on the times where I really can't carry the load by myself, they could read the room and show some support you know, and offering to do something, but then doing it wrong or doing it lazy or doing it sloppy, that doesn't help me. That doesn't take anything off my load. It just replaces it with something else. An example, I do laundries usually Sundays and Mondays because it doesn't interfere with anyone else. It's kind of like my lazy day, even though I still have to do stuff around the house. And it's like the girls, teenagers, they drive. I mean, one of them has a job. They're fully independent and they don't do anything at the house. They don't have any chores. They don't have any responsibilities, any obligations. And so they had to do their laundry yesterday and they literally had nothing else to do except their laundry. And yet when I wake up this morning to use the washer and dryer, the washer and dryer are both full. When I know for a fact they were home and they weren't doing anything. So that should have been completed. And so it's like, I'm not upset that they didn't help me do something. I'm upset that they're 
slowing me down from doing what I don't want to do but still have to do <laughs> so like right now I left and I was pissed I'm like I'm having to come to the laundromat because I have to do the things that no one else wants to do you know why why can't Parker wash the comforter why can't he come to the laundromat well because he'd probably ask me where's the laundromat how do I pay at the laundromat how do I pack the detergent where's the comforter how do I wash the comforter and it's just so much easier for me to do it myself <laughs> Parker and I got into this huge fight huge I mean we're still pretty upset at each other huge fight on Friday because he offered to pick up groceries since the freeze our groceries have been super scattered all over the place so I have to get chicken here and I have to get vegetables there and I have to so luckily we've been able to use things like butcher bot and so we've had like we just had to make do and so I've had to do pickups here there 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 and so Parker's really sweet because he's always willing to help but it's always with a super hardcore explanation, expectations, how to, when, you know, but it's just, it just gives me so much more work. Well, historically, Parker, we make fun of him because he has this curse where if he does pickups, if he does pay, like he does something for me where he has to pay, if he has to pick up groceries or whatever, he has to go buy food, like takeout, it's always wrong always literally every single time it's wrong so I don't know if you have this joke going on about how that always goes wrong wouldn't you just double check before coming home so he came home on Friday and all the groceries were wrong he, they gave him someone else's order and he comes home he's all proud of himself I'm like well this isn't our order and he's like well are you mad at me and I'm like yeah because I've been home and you offered to help and now instead of taking this off my plate now there's one more thing on my plate I have to worry about where I'm gonna get the groceries I have to worry about what to do with these this person's groceries I have to carry the guilt of taking someone else's groceries and so anyway we got into a huge fight and I'm like it's like <laughs> I think it's humans it takes just a little bit of effort to know how to do things the right way and the way that matters and the way that actually contributes is help and we don't we choose not to you know we choose to ignore the recycling that's piling up we choose to ignore the trash that's overflowing we choose to put our plates in the sink instead of washing them when we're just sitting on our all day and I come home and it's like like I said usually I'm like <laughs> got this I can take care of it I got it. I can do it because it's my job and I signed up for it and thankfully I have healthy kids that I could do this for you know I count my blessings but dude my dog just f died, you know? Parker, we don't know the results of his melanoma yet. You know, it's just like, he got an excision. If Remove like f this chunk of skin. You know, his daddy passed away. Wesley's ear now and Sophia maybe has tumors in her liver. Like, my load is so heavy right now. And I have people that I don't expect to be helping me instead of the people under my own roof and it really hurts my feelings you know I shouldn't have to go to the laundromat to escape them because I'm so frustrated at them right now so yesterday Irma was like hey we're home if you want to send the boys over to play and I was like you know what you're a freaking angel because I'm currently fixing or trying to fix Leslie's ear because it's like this big and infected and I don't know what happened and as a mom you kind of as a mom of a 14 year old dog, you go familiar with how their skin is, how it heals, and that to me doesn't look like a diabetic sore. It looks like he was bit or he was cut. And there's only two places where it could have happened. Both places are trustworthy and should have told me. And so, man, it is so, so much. So here's your homework for this video. I want you guys to tell me on the days as a mental load carrier, as a house manager, on the days where you feel like I feel today, where is the place you run away to? Because I know it's gonna be something logical. It has to be something that doesn't make you lose track of time. It has to be somewhere that's close by in case your family needs you. It has to be somewhere that's not gonna cost a lot of money so it doesn't affect your budget. And it has to be somewhere that's not gonna make you fall behind on your chores. <laughs> For me, it's always random. It's usually like a drive-up pickup or I'll go to like an In-N-Out and I'll like literally go buy a burger and eat it on the drive back and that's my escape. Sometimes I'll go and I'll just park outside of church, like in the parking lot and just sit there. And just being in that energy kind of recharges me a little bit. But today, I choose to take my uh, mental breakdown at the laundromat. <laughs> I might as well have my mental breakdown and complete a chore at the same time. <laughs> so that's the status of my life. Your homework question is, where's your ridiculous place to have your mental breakdown? <laughs> 
You guys, I can't believe I put this on the internet, you know, but I don't want to do the fake, staged, edited, scripted stuff because that's not life. That's not what we're going through. That's not what's going on. That's not why the pediatrician was mean to me. You know, it's like we all have true life bull going on right now and this is it. I'm sharing mine. You don't have to share yours, but I just want you to know that it doesn't matter what your job is, what your career is, what you're doing, how you show up for people in your life. We're all going through it. And sometimes it's dumb and sometimes it's petty and other times it's uncontrollable grief that just hits you in random times and stupid things like lazy teenagers or annoying kids or like an, a husband that's <laughs> distracted all the time is just a trigger. And normally it's not. Normally you accept that. You know that's who they are. And so I think it helps me a ton recognizing that, that I'm the one that's the weak link right now, but it doesn't make me feel any better. And I sure as hell know it doesn't make my family feel any better, like having me raging around the house, which is partially why I like, remove myself from the situation, but there's only so much removing you can do before you're like, do you even notice that I'm this upset? And what's your plan to help me with it? Because they're like, another trigger. <laughs> you guys, good morning, happy Monday. All right, so I totally fell off the face of the planet yesterday for obvious reasons, but I forgot to do the outro for this video. I actually just got back from, from Pilates and if you guys could smell me. I smell worse than I look. So I wanted to check out and say bye to you guys, but also look, I'm doing a dad pose. Do you see me in the background? A little dad pose. Don't look at my Sephora bag. You didn't know what's going on back there. You don't know, you gotta wait. You gotta wait to find out about all the moisturization that's happening on this face. So do not be judged by the current state of my face or my stress rash. Do any of you guys ever like, do any of you guys manifest like physical reactions to like a really stressful time, moment or anything? No, I do, I really do. And the funny thing is that the boys do too. So it's like, why can't we just give them, why can't we, why can't they inherit like only our good stuff, you know? And then make up their own bad stuff. Like the bad stuff should be just on them and they should just get the good stuff from the parents. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you about that. So anyway, I wanted to check out, say goodbye, thank you guys for joining us, but also remind you that if ButcherBox has been on your mind, don't wait for any other promo. Like you need the free ground beef for life promo. Just knowing how happy it makes me, just, just that thought alone, if that's not motivation enough, like you know what I mean? Today's actually Valentine's Day. We have a lot of investigation happening right now when it comes to really deep hydration and replacing, not replacing, and finding a suitable alternative for the Augusti uh, Augustinus Bader Rich Cream. I don't think I'll ever find anything that's identical, but I may find suitable alternatives depending on your skin type. You know what I mean? But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this weekend vlog. I hope you enjoyed Randon's hot pink hair. I hope you, oh, I hope you enjoyed this handsome fella. Yeah. It was definitely a trying weekend for me. And as I think about how I anticipate editing this vlog, I don't think I'm gonna edit it much. And I think it wouldn't be fair to me, to the current state of our life, to what's going on, to the season of life, and to you guys to really just edit a lot of the stuff that I've included in here. You know, grief, sadness, losing your on your family. And the last thing that I wanna leave you guys with is movies, family, growing up, talking to friends and family, watching our favorite people on social media um, avenues. We get this perpetual message of life is sunshine and rainbows. Life is butterflies and unicorns. Life is great, marriage is great, kids are great, but ultimately, Everything comes with a price. Marriage is really difficult. Having kids is really difficult. Divorce is really difficult. Blending a family, nearly impossible. I mean, statistics show that blending a family could take up to seven years. We're not even halfway there yet. So it's just one of those things that take everything with a grain of salt and don't try to find the parallelism in your life and my life. Every life is different, every situation is different, everything works out differently. And while I may show you the true truth of our life and our struggles, there's still so much going on behind the scenes. So 
keep in mind that you guys are getting most people's highlight reels. If you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, and I think even on those days where I bare my soul to you guys and I cry on camera or I rant or I vent, I think you guys are still just getting like the first layer because there's so much that goes on behind the scenes and so much that needs to be respected in terms of privacy without getting into too much detail, you know? So I don't know, when you watch someone and you see their happiness, subtract a little bit of it, they might be acting. And when you watch someone and you see their sadness or their anger, add a little bit because I'm pretty sure they're protecting themselves or maybe even you. So reality is not something we're ever gonna see when it comes to social media and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And I'm trying my best to give you a taste of reality, but ultimately what goes on behind your closed doors is, is normal and it's your truth and it's okay. And the comparison game is, I mean, it's the thief of joy and we don't need that, you know? You know what you do need? Two free pounds of ground beef for life. Just saying. <laughs> if you guys were interested in checking out Butcher Box, all the information will be listed in the description box of this video. Y'all don't know, you have no idea how much I love you guys so much, so much. You're so important. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm praying, I'm, I'm holding on to this idea that I think I might be back on track when it comes to regularly scheduled programming, Monday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, but something might come up. You guys know our January was set on fire, not in the cool like 50 cent rap video kind of way, but if everything goes normal for us, you know, you should be seeing us here more often. Anyway, that's it. Y que mucho se despide. <laughs> I love you guys so much. And you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys. See you guys looking at my bracelet. That's cute. I just arrived yesterday with Amazon. Maybe I'll show you soon. <laughs>